So in terms of stories for a smaller business, I recommend the four P's. The first and foremost is problems you solve for your customers. That's, you know, and that's it. Don't go beyond that. I recommend no more than two minutes. The second one is your process. How do you do it? I like the episodic engagement. I don't want you to throw a seven minute video at someone because they won't watch it in one sitting. And when you're on social media, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, those are ideal. Process is second. Now we can get into, hey, here is how we do what we do. Um, and uh, you know, we'll use a lot of motion graphics and animation because people are visual. Um, purpose, now you can get into your why, your Simon Sinek and your why. Um, I, I recommend that as a bio video on your website. Instead of having your bio written, which is good to have it there, give me 45 seconds of you know, why you're, you came to this you know, business in the first place. And the last one is proof, proof of your expertise. This is where you teach me something. Be a thought leader in your industry. Give it away for free. That Welcome to the Powerful Marketing Tips Podcast, created for overwhelmed business owners who want to build, run, and organize their marketing for good. And here's a brief overview of our guest. Storytelling is not a new phenomenon. I mean, we all know that we should do more of it to generate interest and stand out, right? But let's be honest, it can be quite tricky to put that into practice. Today's guest, Rafer Weigel, is a 15-year journalism veteran who's worked for blue-chip companies like CNN, Fox News, The Los Angeles Times, ABC, and CBS. He's a storytelling expert, and with his company, Weigel Media Group, he creates content for companies and nonprofits, telling their stories in video and written formats that can create revenue and calls to action. So if you want to know how to tell compelling stories, you're in good company. Enjoy the episode. Hi, friends. I am glad to be here with you. It is our second season with the Powerful Marketing Tips podcast, and I am so excited. We are here to inspire you and bring you the best marketing insights. And with no further ado, the topic of this episode is how to build your brand through storytelling and content creation. And I am very glad to present to you a special guest with 20 years of media experience, who is also a very skilled storyteller in video production. Welcome, Rafer. Hi, Marilis. It's great to be here. And uh, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you. So uh, yeah. I love the way you pronounce my name. You must have traveled here in Europe a lot. Yes, I have. I, I, I was one of those idiots in high school that studied French. No offense to the French. Um, being in the States, though, it was like if I didn't, you had two choices, French and Spanish. But anyway, I, I've, I've, uh, to me, I think every American needs to travel to Europe because we can really become very geocentric. You know, we, we, we get, you know, we grow up with so much dogma of, America's greatest country in the world. And and at the end of the day, you have to go. I mean, going to Europe, you're going to see rugs older than our country. I mean, it's and when you and when you see that, you know, in buildings and structures, you know, thousands of years old, it's very humbling. And it is. Uh, so I, I find it to be very, very important. So um, and, and you, you know, you pronounced your name. So I listened and now I'm pronouncing it back the way I heard it. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, when everybody are welcome to Europe. So thank you for for that. <laughs> and please let me know when you're around because, you know, I also travel more around Europe, sometimes also in the United States, but not so often. So Rafer, please share with us a little bit of your own story so that we could get to know you better here. Yeah. So uh, I'm a recovering journalist, I like to say. I was in uh, TV news and print journalism before that for a number of years. Um, and, uh, and by the way, I want to clarify, I don't mean you should only travel to Europe. You should travel all over the world. I apologize. Um, but but it, uh, Estonia, it, let me help you help me out here. That's that's in Asia or is it in Europe? I thought it was in Europe. It is in Europe. OK, OK, good. All right. I just wanted to make sure of that. But um, yeah, so recovering journalist uh, did that for a number of years. And, you know, the thing with journalism today, you know, I got into it because uh, my father was a sportscaster. My mother was a newscaster. We grew up in that culture and the culture of journalism. And I don't and it's bad mouthing 
journalism is becoming kind of a cliche. It's passe, right? Um, but it isn't the same. It's just not. It, it wasn't, you know, uh, 20 years ago, you know, there was a lot more investigative journalism. And really the issue for it is that just it's pure economics. The money's not there. You know, when my father did uh, uh, sports and news back in the 1980s in, uh, in the Chicago area, I mean, they were getting a 50 ratings share. Now, to put that in perspective, that means 50 percent of all households in the entire area of Chicago were watching his newscast. That's why I love the movie Anchorman, because it wasn't that was a documentary. I'm telling you, that was the way it was back in those days. Everybody knew you and that grew up with that. And so I thought, oh, great, this is what it was like. Well, you know, we have so many different choices now in cable and people aren't getting their news from TV news anymore. So when I was doing it, we were getting maybe a one or two share and we celebrated that. So that would be like one percent of households. So to me, you know, storytelling uh, to, to me to have public relations or PR, traditional PR, of sending out the press release and hoping for the media to tell your story is an incomplete marketing strategy because the resources simply aren't there for the media uh, to come and tell your story anymore. In fact, my belief is, and we, and I know I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll shut up and let you chime in here, but my belief is that traditional PR now needs to move into content creation. And that traditional PR firms, if you aren't embracing the idea of content creation and ultimately telling the client story independently of the media, I personally believe those PR agencies will go out of business in several years because relying on the media to show up at your door with cameras or call on the phone with a reporter is getting less and less and less and less. In fact, there are so many now tools out there, Cision PR and a number of other uh, of these um, online uh, press uh, uh, mechanisms where if you send out the release and the video, they'll send it out to all these news outlets. Here's the thing with news outlets, they need content. So if you, mm -hmm. if you do the job for them, if you write a really good release, put in a video, and you need a video, by the way, and I'll tell you why in a second, but when you send those out on Cision PR, those news outlets will simply put it on their website. The SEO boost that you will get from that is tw three times higher than, let's say, the twelve hundred dollars that you're going. I shouldn't, you know, I should be getting a kickback from Cision PR. But, but that to me, the online PR model is going to be, um, you know, the future. Uh, but it, it, video is everything, and that's what mm -hmm. I'm going to get to this. Um, when you when you send out, people do not read press releases anymore. People do not read texts and blogs anymore. If you're going to write a blog, if you're going to send a release, you've got to put a video with it. it it's just, it's the way, it, it's not the future, it's now. So you covered it all, thank you, but <laughs> let's, go, let's go through them, uh, you know, one by one, because that's a bold statement, you know, around PR, let's be honest. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on, um, on different generations. Because I agree with you mm -hmm. that all the channels, you know, the algorithms are preferring video and I agree with you. Uh, but at the same time, I see that there are so many different generations in the marketplace today. And some of them are still actually reading things. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts? There are here? still people that they want. Well, you, that's why you need both. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, I mean, you have to have both on there. I mean, yes, my teenage son has not read something. It's on YouTube 12 hours a day. Um, I'm going to make another bold statement. I'm sure I upset people in the PR industry. I'm going to upset the people in the marketing industry. If you're a marketing agency and you are not insisting that your clients use video in their strategy, I'm sorry, but you're stealing their money. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the ROI on video is just so high and it's not, and it's, it, the blog is the searchable tool on LinkedIn. Video is searchable on YouTube. YouTube is the second most search engine uh, behind Google. Mm -hmm. The two of those working together in tandem. There is no better. There, there's a, what. Tell me what's better. Tell me what is a better way to go. And I think that um, the con, there's 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 two uh, issues when it comes to video. Either one, it's too cheap, and and too rustic or there's an obsession with it being too perfect. 
you know, I looked at the marketplace and saw a disconnect. I saw people doing crap with their cell phones and I saw a lot of videographers charging twenty, thirty thousand dollars for these high end, super polished videos for their website. OK, mm -hmm. so you do the one video for your website. So what it does? I mean, it, it's that's fine for an SEO boost. And but to me, that's a waste of money. You know, to me, if you can figure out the quality and quantity model, right? So you come out and you do a shoot and you do a video for, let's say, four thousand dollars for your website. Two camera shoot, really, really nice lighting, professional grade. That would be, I would think, a, a good comparable price. That's a two person crew. Carve that up. Carve that up into 12 to 14 YouTube LinkedIn posts. Um, you know this. You're, you're a very savvy marketer. Video on LinkedIn gets uh, I want to say two to three times more uh, more engagements than uh, text alone. If you send a video with your press release, according to Cision PR, it is 20 times higher to be engaged with than mm -hmm. text alone. The stats are undeniable. I agree. One thing I also see around um, creating videos is this, um, let's say, struggle uh, with different settings. You know, there are vlogs, video interviews, right. tutorials, videos as a presentation, you know, product demos, video testimonials. There are like hundreds <laughs> of different ways to do yeah. that. And yep. the way I see it, businesses feel so overwhelmed. What are your thoughts here? If I, right. how, should, how should I really understand which, <laughs> what is best for my business? Yeah, and that's a very valid question. And 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 here, you know, it, it does require a lot of time and energy and effort, or it requires money. Um, case in point, I am a content marketer, and I am not doing nearly enough content for myself. I'm I'm a cobbler whose kids have no shoes. I mean, a lot of people could look at me as a massive hypocrite. I mean, I try when we're out on a shoot. I'll I will pick up my cell phone or I'll have my videographer shoot something, and we'll edit it and and put it together. Um, you know, ultimately, that was the problem we sought out to solve um, the, the in terms of a production. This is going to sound salesy. It's not meant to. But just to give an idea of a model that I looked at as how to solve that problem was come out once a quarter. And then um, that business needs to give us uh, either a half a day or one full day. And in that one shoot, we will get you the content, quality content for the next three months for about two thousand dollars a month um that's the way we looked at um in terms of you know for solopreneurs who don't have two thousand dollars a month um larger businesses uh people recommend you do it in-house i'm gonna drop a name of a book that inspired me to do uh to do this uh it's called they ask you answer by marcus I've sheridan read that. I've read that. So That's you know a great what I'm book. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> why don't you tell us about the book since I'm talking so much and why it's good? No, no, no. I would love to hear your insights from there. But I love the uh, the whole idea of the book, how he approached that you should actually use in your content creation the questions that your clients are asking. And it was very bold um, from him to really use also this competitor analysis in her, his website. And I have learned a lot of this guy. So, but please carry on <laughs> with your thoughts. Yeah, on. well, he, he says blog video, again, blog mm -hmm. video, because, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and you have to find, and you need the, uh, the, and here's an example. So he was, his pool company was bankrupt in 2008. He was ready, he, he was contemplating, uh, in the book, he was, he alluded to contemplating suicide. He didn't know what he was gonna do. So he thought of what the most asked question was of his of his customers, and it was, they, what's better, fiberglass or concrete pools? Now they don't do concrete pools; they only did fiberglass. So he did a video blog, and he did a video camera. He didn't use his cell phone, but he didn't hire a videographer. And this is what I want to inspire you guys: is like you don't need. Yes, if you're a high level business, hiring a videographer, yes, that there's no downside to that, but you don't need to. So he had his 4K camera and he addressed the camera directly and said, here's the difference between fiberglass and concrete, fiberglass, blah, 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 concrete, blah, blah, blah. We don't do concrete. If you would like concrete, here's the list of our competitors and their numbers. We, you know, they're, we hear they're great. And then he put a blog on there. I don't have the exact, I'm estimating the stats, but I think I recall he said in one year it got 300,000 hits, which resulted in 30,000 calls and 3,000 new customers. One 
post because it was answering the question that was asked. And that was when the mm -hmm. light bulb went off. The blog caught the Google search. The video kept their attention. That combination is going to make all the difference of the world. So he now left the pool business and he has created a, uh, a consulting company. I connected with him on LinkedIn. He's my age. I was so excited when he, when he accepted my request. And now he businesses hire him. And his belief is if you're a large size business, you need content creation in-house because you need to be churning it out so regularly to stay competitive in today's market. And he will find you the videographer, the editor, and the journalist. And this goes back to the journalism thing. He believes, and I believe, that content creation to be really good has to be story-based. And if you want good storytelling, you need a journalist. So he, he advocates that. Now, we are creating the fractional model of that. My partners are journalists, sadly, out of work journalists. There's a lot of us out there. And, um, and, that's the, and so that's the, the basis of my business was that book. Well, I love that. So, but coming back to the different settings uh, when it comes to video. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yeah, I never I answered believe... your question. <laughs> no worry. It's, it's... No, you Sorry. were sharing some great ideas. But uh, my thoughts here are that it really depends, of course, what is your target group and what are the channels where you put this video out there, right? That's the, I think that's very important. But I'd like to talk about those, um, the content creation for the video, because um, mm -hmm. this is something you're very good at. And um, I mean, storytelling especially, because let's be honest, most businesses, doesn't know how to you know share stories what should right. i talk about and how should i do that so this was a, a great example you brought from um, from this book you know but it was around the right. you know a certain uh, let's say um, product so right, what a is certain product yeah i'd like to i'd like to understand where should i start my like this content creation and storytelling and mm -hmm. and if and how different they are for you yeah, and that's a very, very good question. First of all, I do want to clarify an earlier comment when I dissed an entire industry and said, if you're not doing video, you're basically a crook. I have no ultimate <laughs> respect for marketers. And I very open and honestly say, I don't do analytics. I don't do target market research. I have a very narrow lane. It is deep. But I partner with marketing people who are very smart in analytics. And, and that stuff is important. And that is, you know, so I don't mean to be dismissive about that aspect of the marketing journey. It's just that I only focus on the content thing. And I don't believe I'm a content first channel second guy. I don't understand the finding of the target audience and working out the distribution and all of that stuff. If you don't have a content strategy, you mm -hmm. have one shot to make a good impression. So if you find if you serve them something that's not, you know, good, then you've wasted that opportunity. So to answer your question, Marilis, it's the most important thing is to remember is that the viewer and the audience and your customer, they are the hero of your story. And I can't take credit for that. That is from Donald Miller's Building a Story brand. Mm -hmm. You are in, in too many companies take the approach of they are the hero of their story. Let's talk about how great we are. Nobody cares. They only they only care about what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're talking. This is in the personal services uh, area, which which is where video is vital. When you're talking about somebody hiring you based on trusting you, if you are a consultant, a coach, a doctor, a lawyer, that finance. I'm doing a lot of work in the wealth management space. Because at the end of the day, everybody's using the same computer tools. Why are you hiring this wealth manager? Because you like the person. So that is being, so the wealth management space video is getting a lot more traction in that. Now, if it's a product based thing, um, that's another thing. You know, here's the other stat I heard in uh, They Ask You Answer. And this was written before the pandemic. 80% of all buying decisions are, were made online in 2019 before the pandemic. What do you think that number is up to now? So if you, you have to meet your customer in their digital space with as much, you need to create a virtual experience for them. Um, so yes, if it's products or services that you're proud of, you know, you know, that's something you, you know, that would be a video that would be voiceover graphics. 
um, that can be done fairly cheap. You know, there's lots of companies, uh, you know, in Eastern Europe and India and lots of people on Fiverr that will do that for you for for very little. It means I know people that do it on Canva um, on their own. Um, but in the terms of the other stuff, your story is your most marketable asset. It's just how do you position that story? So it's not about, hey, t I'm going to tell you why I'm so great at what I do, but I'm going to tell you what I can do for you and here's why. Does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. And I want to come back to that. You said you are content first, ch channel second, Kyle. Channel second, yes. Yeah, very good. I mean, very I well believe said. in... Yeah, you, because and I, I'm sorry, I, I, I talk too much. I apologize. No, that's why we're right. here. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. I just, I just um, wanted yeah. to comment on that, that I'm, um, for me, clarity and goals are the first, always. But it needs to be aligned with content and channels we use, right? So actually, we are on the same page, I feel. But, you know, from different angles, we're just approaching that from different angles. So. Let's talk about um, storytelling, because I understand why it is good. I understand how it really uh, helps you, helps others to get to know you better and so on. But I'd like to dive into more into how to do that, how to how to start with storytelling and which stories should we share? You know, some give me give us some, I don't know, ideas or, <laughs> or something here. Sure, sure. Um, well, first of all, I want to go back to what you said about what was you said? What did you say? Goal setting and um, what was clarity it again? and goals first? Yeah, clarity so and goals, I because I, yeah. just one comment here, because what struggles most businesses is that we do very, very different things and mm -hmm. um, and they are not aligned because we are not sure which message we should use, which channel we should use, what, you know. So it all right. really frustrates businesses and they feel like, you know, it, this marketing thing is not working for me or this channel is not working mm -hmm. for me. But if you're not, you know, clear and you don't know, if you don't know where you want to go, who is your target audience, then it's hard to right. create any content, right? You're jumping from one thing to another, one idea from, to another, et cetera. So it's, that's why for me, clarity and goals comes first, and then they should be aligned with content creation and channels. But yeah, well, give us some help here. Well, no, I'm gonna say this is where you, so this is a perfect example, Marilise, of why a combination of you and me together that's the winning combination for marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. I have learned that. So as I like to say, you know, I make the tree fall in the forest, you make it make a sound. And um, what I've learned is that, right, I mean, I when I left TV news and uh, I was naively under the impression of, well, of course, people are going to pay for a three time Emmy award winning journalist to tell their story. They don't give a rat's behind. It was like what, what at the end of the day, creative doesn't lead the initiative anymore. Creative follows the marketing strategy. And I have learned that like people like yourself that, you know, at the end of the day, my, my a lot of my work comes from people going to a marketing agent, uh, marketing person or agency first. And then that marketing person reaches out to us and then we work in tandem with that marketing person. And because they've done the homework that you've described and mm -hmm. I've, I've learned and I'm humble enough to learn that marketing strategy can and often will dictate editorial strategy now in terms of and so that's and and when you put that those two strategies together that's when you win um you know so you're not operating out of a vacuum um so in terms of the stories you know i mean if it's like i know if let, let, so in the environmental social and governance space nonprofits though that story is pretty clear right there you know we're saving x y and z or person x or group x marginalized community x uh and then here's how we do it um the most powerful mechanism in in the in the in that space is testimonials uh if you go to our youtube page wmg communications um the the best the one i'm the most proud of was a, um, a medical startup that is helping people with mobility issues learn to walk and they were trying to uh, get, they're trying to gain money from investors and we spoke and we let we need to talk to the people that are walking because of your product and the whole video was around that 
but then we inserted the CEO is part of that story. So you let we led with the testimonial, and then we came to then the the, the business after the testimonial, saying you know, hey, we're so grateful that we can help these people. So you know, you the the audience and the viewer you know connects the two. If you when we talk about building your brand through storytelling, putting CEOs and 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 figureheads. And key stakeholders, when you put your face of your brand on camera, on on uh, on the web, on video, that's going to work for you. That's going to be successful. And I'll just give you a few examples. Um, let's see, you know, uh, I mean, obviously, Apple has a superior product, but Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, these are household names. Uh, Sir Richard Branson. I don't even know what he does, but I know who he is. Um, the, the best example that I will give you is, if people might recall, Wendy's uh, here in the States, Dave Thomas, the CEO, the most unassuming, sh uh, sh schleppy guy, just like, hey, I'm Dave Thomas. And da -da. Not the person you would think you would put ever on TV, ever. They were in the basement of the rankings. Burger King, McDonald's up here. Wendy's was down here. They were under like everybody, right? I mean, I think so. Dave Thomas decides, I'm going to start doing the commercials and start talking directly to the viewer. He has zero charisma. He has zero presence, but he's a regular guy and people identified with him. That campaign skyrocketed Wendy's into the top five because everybody liked Dave. I mean, wow. at, at the end of the day, I mean, that's that's the proof in the pudding. So if put yourself out there, I turn people off. So I don't like to go on camera, but because uh, I'm a little too, you know, intense. And, and uh, but I think if you are even if you think you're not good on camera, there's no downside to doing it. There's zero downside to you putting your face of your brand on video. I love how you put that, because most people are feeling very bad. <laughs> in front of camera i mean feeling bad not being bad but they feel very bad they they feel like you know they cannot hear their own voice later on or see themselves later on so do you have anything to say to those people who are afraid <laughs> yeah it, it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be authentic and if you're when you're going on camera so there's really two um uh, styles when it comes to video. There's the interview style, mm -hmm. where if you're being interviewed, uh, and that's the preferred method for camera shy people. That's my preferred method for most of my businesses, where I or my journalism partners, my, my partners who are journalists, will interview those key stakeholders. Now, keep in mind, before mm -hmm. you do the video, we don't just fly and go in blind. We do a strategy session beforehand. You know, a lot of videography companies, you call them, they show up, they shoot, here's your video. Whoa, this isn't what we thought. So we want to make sure we understand what are the key messages that we need to convey before we show up with the camera. Um, so the interview style is nice because it allows the interviewee, the subject, to not think about the camera. You're not looking at it and just focus on the person who's interviewing you and those key messages. Um, talking to the camera is good for, I think, lawyers. Uh, they're already very comfortable on camera. Um, talking to the camera can work, and most commercials are like that. It's just um, that's where a lot of people can feel awkward. I was working with someone just two weeks ago, and she was scared to death. God bless this woman. But we wanted her, you know, she had to talk to the camera for her product. And here's what I said to her. You are solving, you're making it, when you, if you're nervous about your performance, you're making it about you. And you're in, and the viewer isn't doesn't care about you. They care about your product. And as I said to her, I said, look, you're solving a problem for thousands of people by offering this product. This product is solving a problem. So when you're offering that product, it's just matter of fact. It's like, look, you know, make it about the viewer and the problem that they have. And here is the problem that I have for you that's going to solve it. To me, it would be like giving directions. Like if somebody said, hey, can you tell me how to get to the courthouse? Oh, yeah. You're going to go down the street. You're going to take a right. You're going to move. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Are you thinking about yourself when you're giving those directions? No, you're thinking about how to get to the courthouse. So uh, embrace that paradigm. It's not about you. It's about the it's about the result. And you are simply the guide giving those directions. I must admit this, uh, the same thinking have helped me a lot because one of my, my favorite quotes is that 
but it is by Rory Baden. It's not my, my own quote, but it uh, it says that it is hard to it's hard to be nervous when your heart is in service. Oh, that is so good. Oh my I gosh, know. I'm stealing that. That is so I good. I know. Please oh, use that. Thank you. It is not mine, it is by yeah. Rory Baden. And oh my God, it kind of changed my world. So, because at first it was mm. also very hard for myself, you know, to, <laughs> to, to do even this podcast and, uh, and everything else I'm doing. So it is uh, hard to be nervous when your heart is in service, that's for sure. But let's go back to the storytelling part again. <laughs> Because I still don't keep answering your questions. I'm I know, so sorry. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> because I know my audience <laughs> and they struggle uh, with that. Yeah. So we wanted to, we, we know or we think that we know what to talk about the, the products or services, right. so, so on. So I have also really suggested my own clients to work through, you know, the same, to work with the same principle that uh, this uh, book we talked about actually shared, mm -hmm. you know, ask, ask some questions from your clients, even go to right. your, I don't know, client, um, I'm sorry, go to, go to somebody who actually works with, with your clients one on one every day, you know, either mm -hmm. this is a sales manager or, or right. just a customer, um, what's the word I'm looking for, I lost it. Who takes um, care of the customers? Thank you, Rafer. Yeah, customer service representative, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you go to your customer service uh, representative, they can also tell you what are the questions that most often, right. you know, uh, people are asking. So that's that's one way, right? Do we yeah, have any other say, ideas? Yeah, go the, and, and as you know, there's too often sales and marketing are not working together. You know, mm -hmm. that, and I those know. really should always be working in tandem. And that's another thing about video. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about video for social media and traditional media, but for as a sales and marketing tool, um, there's a term in they ask you answer talk. He calls it assignment selling. I'm going to answer your question about the stories. I promise this time um, assignment you. selling is if they're interested in specific. But this actually will sort of answer your question. So assignment selling, if they're interested in a specific product or service, and this is what my wealth management clients will do, they have several different offerings, you know, uh, investing for retail clients, investing for corporate clients, et cetera, et cetera, stock diversification, um, cryptocurrency as an investment. So when you get on that, um, in, in order to close that client, there's probably three, four Zoom calls that need to happen before it happens. So when you get a sense, when that rep or that initial salesperson vets the potential customer or client, they, get the, they ask the questions, they get an idea of what the customer is interested in before they set up that meeting with the senior salesperson or the, rep, or the account manager they send a video of the product or service that they are mm -hmm. interested in. Mm -hmm. And that video tells the story about the product or the service. And so that, so that storytelling, again, it's around your product, it's around your service, it makes the audience the hero of the story. Uh, so now, to use an American football analogy, now but when the, when the meeting starts, instead of the ball being on the 20-yard line, you're on your own 20-yard line, the ball is now on the 50-yard line for the, for the, the company. Mm -hmm. They still have mm -hmm. to bring the ball across the goal line and score the touchdown, but they've shortened the field now. So, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, the, the feedback that I've gotten from them is it cuts down on the sales process by about 20 or 30 percent because it informs and in, they ask you answer. He, he's very clear about this. Great. I'm looking forward to meeting with you before we meet. Please watch video X and read this blog. All right. Da, 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 I'll see you tomorrow. By, and, 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 they, and he, Sheridan, insists that they watch that video or read that blog before the meeting or he won't take the meeting. And he puts it in terms of like, look, this is for your benefit. This is not a sales mechanism. It's to keep, make sure, this will make sure you are as informed as possible going into our meeting. Um, and it works. I mean, you're talking about two to three, you know, 20 to 30% less energy and effort to close a sale. What would that look like to your bottom line? So in terms of stories for a smaller business, I recommend the four P's. These are the four different silos that you should focus on, in my opinion. The first and foremost is problems you solve for your customers. That's, you know, and that's it. 
Don't go beyond mm -hmm. that. I recommend no more than two minutes. The second one is your process. How do you do it? So that if they, I like the episodic engagement. I don't want you to throw a seven minute video at someone because they won't watch it in one sitting. There's just mm -hmm. too many other things going on. Give it to them in doses. And when you're on social media, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, those are ideal. Um, problems you solve for your customers, process is second. Now we can get into, hey, here is how we do what we do. Um, and uh, you know we'll use a lot of motion graphics and animation because people are visual. Um, purpose, now you can get into your why, your Simon Sinek and your why. Um, mm -hmm. I, I recommend that as a bio video on your website. Instead of having your bio written, which is good to have it there, give me 45 seconds of you know why you you came to this you know business in the first place because there's probably a good story there that the, your your customer might resonate but they've have to go through steps one and two before they'll care about step three if that makes sense and the mm -hmm. last one is proof proof of your expertise this is where you teach me something be a thought leader in your industry give it away for free that's what Sheridan did in his video blog and his written blog about fiberglass versus concrete pools. He was proving to the audience that he was an expert in this field. And so they trusted him. Um, and then he took it a step further and gave contact information of his competitors, further uh, solidifying his area of expertise. That last one is open-ended. That's your YouTube channel. Your proof of expertise is where you are gonna give us a post a week and you can record them all on, in one day about your area of expertise on a certain thing. You know, the reason I haven't done it is, you know, my expertise is video and storytelling, and I don't feel like, I, I feel like I would be talking about the same thing over and over again. Um, but, you know, and, and, that's, and that's where I need an editor. I need somebody to interview me and be like, no, dude, that would be a good post, just what you said. So even I need an editor, even I need someone to help me make sense of, of you know, all of, the, all of the stuff going on in my head. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, and I love the 4P system, problems, process, purpose, and proof. But I, I have one worry here, because maybe you, you see you know, a lot of uh, mistakes also around uh, videos and storytelling, I'm sure. One mistake that mm -hmm. really came to my mind right now is that we tend to be too salesy in these videos, but yes. this is not a great right. place to, to really do that, right? Right, I mean, again, if you take the energy and the emphasis off of, right, no, you're right. I mean, if, if you tell, not sell, right? So if you're talking about, so process, process, that also can be very much open-ended. It You know, your process for product X or service X, it will be different than your process for, you know, product or service Y. So you want, so, you know, like if you're a wealth management and you're gonna have different processes for the different offerings that you have. Um, so you can explain that in, in each one of those, you know, those creative assets. Then that would not come across salesy at all because you would just be explaining how you do what you do. You can certainly insert, you know, there's no downside to passion um, unless it's, you know, but when you share your passion for that process and 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 why you think it's the best, you know, why you think it, I mean, at the end of the day, if you as a business owner are doing something, it's because you believe in it and you know mm -hmm. that it's going to work and you can give, you can say that, you know, if you focus on the idea that you're not the hero, you're the guide and the customer is the, is the hero and that this is going to help them. And if you know in your heart that you're, what you're doing is helping your customers, then you're not a salesperson, you're a problem solver. If you don't believe that, then I would think you should probably change businesses, right? I mean, if you don't feel that what you're doing is really, you know, a quality thing that's helping people, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to give life advice to anybody, but I, I would think that's, that's, there's a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. So for me, great story sells without selling. <laughs> right. See, you said it better than I did. It's true. Great stories yeah, sell reframing without selling. Your thoughts. Yeah, I was just re reframing your thoughts. So I would love to talk about this topic, you know, hours, because I think that's very interesting. 
But please tell, where should people go if they want to connect with you and learn more about what, what you are doing before we wrap, up, wrap it up here? I'm, a, I'm the only Ray for Weigel on LinkedIn, so that's helpful. And, uh, and, and WMGcommunications.com. Um, so yeah, I, I, I love having conversations with people. I love being a connector and a go-giver. You know, um, I, you know, working in, in TV news, it was a very ego driven business. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was a very, I was very misguided. I, uh, I, I was so focused on advancing my career and my, my professional development that I was not being of service to anything other than, you know, the, the ego and that stands for hedging God out. And, um, and then leaving, you know, TV news. Now it's so wonderful to be of service to others and not make, you know, I was following the myth, the myth that I was the hero of my own story when I, you know, when I was working in that industry and it, and it was a, it, it was a failed experiment, it crashed and burned. Now I serve others and it's so, it's so great to, to see other people's success um, by telling their stories. The biggest uh, satisfaction I get is in the nonprofit space. Um, because those nonprofits are helping other people, but there are businesses that are helping other people. And I take that mentality that if I'm helping them help their customers, you know, it's like paying it forward. I just, uh, you know, I live for it. I don't feel the need to be, you know, I, I, I want to be behind the camera. You know, I want to be a kingmaker, not a king, I guess is be the best way to phrase it. So, um, <laughs> and the point of me saying all of that is I love connecting people. I love, I love being able to help other people meet other people. And I've, um, very aggressively. I met you through a, uh, a networking event, Marilis, and I'm grateful for that. And so I want to be able to, you know, so I'm a very aggressive networker. It is intentional. So contact me and let's meet. And if there's somebody that I can introduce you to, to help you, <coughs> excuse me, I, I enjoy doing that. I enjoy um, being a go-giver. Well, thank you, Ray, Rafer. I know that I'm going to ask you to connect me with uh, Mark, Marcus Sheridan. <laughs> <laughs> because I am not connected with him. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, our listeners would love to hear uh, his insights also here one day on this podcast. So please help me, Rafer, uh, to, to wrap it up for our listeners here today. You know, if they are now thinking, okay, how should I really bring, the, I'm sorry, how should I build my brand now through st storytelling and or content creation? What are the main things you know they should take from from this interview today? I would say you know the main thing is you know just buy, eat, take a bite out of the elephant or eat the elephant one bite at a time. You do you do mm -hmm. really need to start with videos on your website. I'm finally shooting mine here. Uh, I don't know when this will air, but yeah, I I don't even have those on my website, so I know I look like a hypocrite, and I'm finally going to be doing that. And I'll tell you why I didn't do it. And this is advice I'm going to tell my, our listeners, viewers, is I've been obsessed with those being perfect. I wanted to lose weight. Uh, I, you know, I wanted I've gone over the script 47 times. You know, I'm obsessed with perfection. Don't do that. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but yes, if you are investing money, I understand why you want it to be the best that it can be. Because once you put that video on your website, it's going to last you for two years. Um, and then after that, it has to be consistent. And LinkedIn is ideal mm -hmm. in terms of uh, that space. Um, you know, you can use you you can use the video on your camera if there's something that you know um, that you know the spirit moves you. Uh, I would recommend an external camera for your computer. Don't use the internal camera. Um, cell phones fine once in a while. It's certainly fine for TikTok, uh, but be consistent. Um, your competitors are doing it now. I mean, the content creation game is is going into the digital space. That's going to be the that is the norm now. Um, and I believe you're losing market share to your competitors if you're mm -hmm. not doing it. Um, you know, focus on being a thought leader and and sharing your ideas and your thoughts. And don't talk about how great you are. Talk about things that you know to be true. And you, I don't think you can go wrong from that and keep it short. It doesn't have to be, you know, I understand the YouTube algorithm is watch times trigger it, right? Um, and, and then here's the last one thing I'll say with why video is good for your website is speaking of algorithms, that triggers the Google algorithm. If someone spends one minute on your website, as you know, Google goes, hey, people are staying here, it moves you up. 
So if that video, if they're watching it for 45 seconds, you've probably triggered the algorithm. If you put a crap piece of video up there that they watch for five seconds, you wasted your money, it accomplished nothing. So that mm -hmm. is why you wanna invest at least mm -hmm. into some quality. Don't overpay, but, um, but that's the reason why uh, you need to do that. And then those, those social media links can create backlinks to your website. So just keep it going, just keep it going. Yes, people do like to read and you don't feel like putting your camera up there. Just, you know, type something up and get it out there, but be consistent. I love that. So just put yourself out there and be consistent, keep it going. So thank you, Ray, for so much incredible insights and ideas. And last but not the least, you know, we are gathering this inspirational list of the songs and quotes. So could you please uh -huh. share and comment on the song and a quote that you have shared with us beforehand? Yeah, um, so I, I love uh, Stevie Wonder originally wrote the song, but I, I prefer the Red Eye Chili Peppers cover of Higher Ground. Um, you know, people keep on learning, uh, people keep on loving. I mean, it's just a really it's it's kind of like it's kind of like the song I listen to at the gym that like I I'll listen to it over and over <laughs> again. Uh, the quote is tell me tell me a fact and I'll learn. Tell me a truth and I'll believe. But tell me a story and it will live in my heart forever. And that's the reason why, you know, storytelling is you need to create that emotional connection with your clients. That doesn't mean you're being manipulative. You know, that doesn't mean you're being gratuitous. Um, but if you put yourself on video and you speak from the heart and as you said, um, your quote uh, about if you're you can't be of ner you can't be nervous if your heart is in service. Heart. Mm -hmm. And if you have that, you know, if you're if you're coming from that space, if that's your mantra, when you're doing your videos, then you will win. You will succeed in creating an emotional connection. There's so much noise out there. People are dying for human connection. And that is why I went with the moniker for my, band, my, my brand, your brand breaking through the noise. Originally it was stories that break through the noise, but mm -hmm. that made it about me, right? And that's bad marketing because I made it about me. You know, It's about the customer, your brand, breaking through the noise you know that was the reason here in the states why bill why um bill why hillary clinton lost to donald trump it was marketing donald trump's marketing made it about the the, the voter make america great again mm -hmm. hillary clinton's marketing made it about her i'm with her and i believe that is why donald trump won the election wow i didn't expect that <laughs> to be a topic here but very well said <laughs> That just to put it into perspective, yeah. how that guy could get to the White House was oh, because of good marketing. <laughs> well, thank you, Ray, for so much for your time and for the insight. It's been a real pleasure talking to you here. Thank you so much, Marty Lise. I'm grateful. Well, that's all we've got for this episode of the Powerful Marketing Tips podcast. But make sure to link up with us at our free monthly international mastermind event. Just go to powerful-marketers.com forward slash mastermind. We would really appreciate it if you would rate this podcast and leave a comment wherever you tune in to listen. That will help us and other potential uh, new listeners. Until next time.